before this video gets underway, please head down below and click subscribe. It only takes two seconds, it would really help me out, and you can always unsubscribe later. Please enjoy the video. There is a selection of nations around the world that demand and indeed receive more of the public's attention than others. Afghanistan, China, Iran, Syria, the United States, all receive much of the global limelight. This in turn leaves many tens of countries rather out of sight and out of mind. Today on Fig Academy, we're going to have a look at just one such nation, Timor-Leste. Occupying a little over half of the island of Timor, Southeast Asia's newest nation is home to a little over 1.3 million warm and welcoming people. Timor-Leste is a slowly but surely emerging state, still recuperating after a difficult start to the new millennium. Most Timorese are employed in the agricultural sector and the adult literacy rate is still poor, but the nation as a whole has shown many positive signs of growth for some years now. Sitting among the eastern half of the Indonesian archipelago, Timor-Leste is sandwiched between two much larger nations, Australia and of course Indonesia. Both nations have, at one point or another, tremendously wronged the young state. For a concise explanation how Australia has taken advantage of one of its neighbours, please watch the Juice Media's honest government ad on Timor-Leste, after this video of course, but here's a clip. Visit Timor-Leste, Australia's favourite neighbour. No, that's Bali, dickhead. East Timor, home to Virgin Islands, golden beaches, friendly people, but most importantly, shit tons of oil and gas. Regardless, Timor-Leste's physical geography is incredibly idyllic, with a hot and humid tropical climate typical of maritime Southeast Asia. The nation packs a punch for its size, being rather mountainous, skirted by pristine beaches and islands, in many ways, Timor-Leste could be considered the epitome of what an island paradise should be, but it has not always been so welcoming on this island green. Timor-Leste, like its nearby neighbours of Australia and the island of New Guinea, welcomed its first wave of human settlement some 40,000 years ago. In the 16th century, the swashbuckling maritime empire of Portugal came knocking, colonising the eastern portion of the island of Timor and exerting its rule over the prior inhabitants. The Portuguese brought with them, among other things, their style of architecture, plenty of examples of which remain standing to this day, as well as much more clearly, Catholicism, with 98.3% of the modern population adhering to the faith. The conclusion of the Second World War brought with it a global wave of independence movements and decolonization. Neighbouring Indonesia was no exception throughout the late 1940s and would gain its independence from the Netherlands in 1949. However, it would not be until 1974 with Portugal's Carnation Revolution that would see the decolonization of Timor-Leste and indeed all of Portugal's remaining colonial possessions through the withdrawal of military and administrative staff and they returned to Portugal to discover the nation's new normal. For many Lusophone nations, this led to civil war, one-party states, and significant prolonged violence. Timor-Leste was unfortunately no exception, with neighbouring Indonesia invading and occupying the small nation for a quarter of a century. A detailed statistical report into the occupation of Timor-Leste cites a minimum of 102,000 deaths, with 18,600 killings and 84,200 excess deaths from hunger and illness in that time. However, a second number, drawing on data from Portuguese, Indonesian, and the Catholic Church, cites a number of 200,000 deaths. Regardless of the final numbers, this occupation was undeniably deadly and oppressive for civilians and indeed the Timorese guerrilla forces creating opposition alike. From even prior to Indonesia's initial invasion, and the killing of the Balibo Five, a group of five Australian journalists killed while in the nation reporting on the Timor-Leste independence since the Portuguese withdrawal, to the Dili massacre of 1991. Indonesia, under the Suharto regime, was not afraid to stamp its authority on Timor 
with its murderous ferocity. Something happened here last night that moved us very deeply. It was so far outside our experience as Australians and so inextricably interwoven with the atmosphere of this place that we'll find it very difficult to convey to you in an Australian living room, but we'll try. We were brought to this tiny native village from Maliana because we were told that Maliana was not safe at night. When we arrived, the second in charge, who speaks very little English, came to us and in a halting but urgent way said the commander wanted to speak to us. And then for the next hour, sitting on woven mats under a thatched roof in a hut with no walls, we were the target of a barrage of questioning from men who know they may die tomorrow and cannot understand why the rest of the world does not care. Why, they ask, are the Indonesians invading us? Why, they ask, if the Indonesians believe that Fretland is communist, do they not send a delegation to Dili to find out? Why, they ask, are the Australians not helping us? When the Japanese invaded, they did help us. Why, they ask, are the Portuguese not helping us? We're still a Portuguese colony. Who, they ask, will pay for the terrible damage to our homes? My main answer was that Australia would not send forces here. That's impossible. However, I said we could ask that Australia raise this fighting at the United Nations. That was possible. At that, the second in charge rose to his feet, exclaimed, Camarada journalist, shook my hand, the rest shook my hand, and we were applauded because we are Australians. That's all they want, for the United Nations to care about what is happening here. The emotion here last night was so strong that we, all three of us, felt we should be able to reach out into the warm night air and touch it. Greg Shackleton at an unnamed village, which we'll remember forever in Portuguese Timor. For more video content, there is a selection of documentaries on YouTube and online that explore these sections of Timorese history, some of which will be linked in the description below. Additionally, for the film buffs out there, 2009 saw the release of Balabo, a film based on the real events of the Balabo 5 and the conclusions thereof. A link to it will also be found in the description below. Nineteen ninety eight saw the end of Suharto's long lasting and rather brutal presidency of Indonesia. Subsequently, Indonesia underwent a period of political change throughout the aftermath of his fall. For Timor Leste, this involved the United Nations sponsoring an international agreement between Portugal and Indonesia for the UN to supervise a popular referendum on Timorese independence in August of 1999. Indonesian military supported Timorese militia groups caused a campaign of violence at this time, prompting an Australian-led United Nations peacekeeping intervention which lasted for some years. In 2000, this force was withdrawn though, would return a couple of further times during the noughties to assist Timorese authorities in quelling violence. Throughout the events of the occupation, such as the initial Timorese declaration of independence in 1975 and the violence that followed, the Dili massacre of 1991, the violence surrounding Indonesia's withdrawal and onto Australia's prolonged and repeated intervention leading United Nations peacekeeping forces, Timor-Leste was often in news headlines. Indeed, I clearly remember seeing reports from East Timor with soldiers, army cars and all sorts being on the news as a child. I didn't know what was happening, but for years after, Timor to me meant war. For Timor Leste, being away from the headlines means being away from drama. Being away from the headlines allows the nation to build itself a better future. Being away from the headlines is good. But now is the time to bring it back into those headlines. Not with words such as war or violence alongside, but instead with words such as peaceful, Beautiful, friendly, welcoming. Let's see Timor Leste for ourselves and tell the world about it. And, speaking of telling the world about it, please do subscribe and share this video around. It only takes a few seconds and would really help me out. Thanks so much for watching.